Now let's bring in legal practitioner Mande Obani who joins us from our Abuja studio. It's like watching a football game, uh, Mr. Obani, and then the winning goal coming just at the very last minute. Let's have your brief analysis of uh, the judicial precision of this decision. Well, as Riley pointed out, it's like a game uh, in which you are uh, expecting a very good goal to be scored by a good uh, dribbler. All of a sudden, maybe the goal post uh, is uh, uh, shifted and you are not able to score. Uh, some of us watch uh, on social media uh, the governor getting prepared for the swearing in ceremony for tomorrow. And I'm sure he was in that particular uh, uh, learning process that he got the news that the Supreme Court has actually uh, nullified his victory that was given to him by the people. It's clearly unprecedented, uh, very unprecedented, you know, unprecedented in the sense that this is the first time a governor-elect is losing his uh, seat as a result of a sin of the deputy governor. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that clearly is something uh, that we really need to look at you know, as a nation. Uh, this is a pre-election matter. Uh, mind you that after the election that took place sometime uh, last year, uh, there was a tribunal issue that went up to Supreme Court and other two or three days ago, the Supreme Court confirmed uh, that the governor-elect of APC is a proper candidate and who was properly elected. All of a sudden, this pre-election matter that has been lingering on the qualification of his deputy now came up today and based upon the fact that the court found that the deputy governor was not qualified okay. by virtue of the fact that he gave wrong information mm. about his qualification. And that scene of the deputy governor was a thing that was visited upon the governor-elect. And the Supreme Court now held that the next person with the highest vote should sworn in and should be given the certificate. Let's take it up from there, Mr. Obani. The Reactions are mixed as regards um, interpretation of that Supreme Court judgment. Uh, the next candidate with the highest number of votes and indeed geographical spread. We're now waiting on INEC to um, interpret that for us, but INEC says it's yet to be served with the certified true copy of that judgment. Yes, uh, if you remember that there was such uh, a pronouncement also by the Supreme Court in Zamfara, uh, Zamfara case, uh, where the Supreme Court also made such a pronouncement. Now, if the court have actually found out that the governor-elect and his deputy uh, um, a victory was clearly invalidated. It means that all the votes that were scored by the APC will go to, uh, you know, uh, to null, it's null and void. Mm -hmm. And so that, those votes may not be taken into consideration. And if the votes of APC uh, is not taken into consideration, it then means that the, the, the PDP candidate uh, will actually be given uh, the certificate of return by INEC. Uh, well, I next said they have yet to, to, to get the, the certified true copy of the judgment in order for them to digest and probably give a legal meaning to what the Supreme Court has said. But okay. I'm saying that if by going by precedent yes. of what transpired in Zamfara, then it then means that the DPDP candidate may be given the certificate of return. And, and Mr. Obani, for the optimum uh, time, yes. we're having to turn to the Supreme Court uh, f to decide who becomes governor as regards... Um, via the ballot, the highest or the majority of votes cast. Well, there are many who would say that this is even a pre-election matter that should have been solved if the stakeholders indeed had done due diligence. Do you think that there's really been lots of sincerity and objectiv objectivity, uh, rather, as we got some electoral reforms in the past years? I think we need to do a lot, you know, in order to reform our, our electoral process in the recent of the world. As you rightly pointed out, this is a pre-election matter, and there has been an election in which somebody was elected by the majority of, of the people within that particular jurisdiction. In other words, he is supposed to govern, a state supposed to be governed by somebody who has the majority vote of the people within the jurisdiction. And so th this is like a technical justice. The court came from nowhere in order to now annul, in order to now invalidate the mandate of the people. That is actually what has happened with this pronouncement. 
and it's a pre-election matter. There has been an election in which the people have validated the mandate of this man who was supposed to be sworn in uh, tomorrow. But all of a sudden, in a pre-election matter, the sin of the deputy is visited upon the governor-elect and he's not going to be sworn in again by virtue of what has happened with his uh, qualification. So to me, we need, re need to sit down and take a critical look at our electoral act and look at even the constitution and do a thorough amendment. If you have, a, if you have nominated a, a deputy who has any baggage whatsoever, it should not affect the, 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 the governor himself. Uh, uh, only if the governor has an issue that the, the, the deputy will have an issue. But this is the first time a deputy governor has an issue and is affecting the governor that has been properly elected by the people. So to me, we need to take a look at our electoral uh, act and, and, and do something by way of reform. This is clearly a, a technical justice that will not in any way go down well with majority of Nigeria, whether you're of APC or PDP, because it's something Absolutely. Uh, to me that is very it, surprising. It, it's, it's, very, it's very shocking. It's very shocking. A historic moment in our electoral life as a nation. Uh, legal practitioner, Mondo Bane, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us on the news tonight.